This is a tutorial on creating a perspective drawing. And what that means is that we will have a pictorial representation of a three-dimensional object, which converges to two vanishing points, one on the far left and one on the far right. So this is called two-point perspective. So the picture that we're going to draw is based on this building over here on the right. Let's look at this in a little bit of detail before we plunge in. Uh, the building here that we're going to look at is rectangular in plan view. So plan view means that you're above the building, okay, looking straight down. And this would be an elevation and this would be a side view. So we have this building and you see uh, that the height of the wall is, the tallest part of the wall is 14 feet and the shorter part of the wall is half of that, which would be uh, seven feet. So we wanna draw that in perspective and we want to do that as if we're an artist standing right here at the standing point. So the first thing that we do is we draw the building in two dimensions in plan view. So almost forget about this picture right now here. Maybe we'll come back to it later. Uh, we're going to draw this picture in 2D with the standing point such that the standing point... Um, is roughly uh, captures this 30 degree uh, cone of vision. Now, what does that mean? A 30 degree cone of vision means that I have um, this line of sight that isn't infinite. Uh, so straight through the building on the center of my vision path, I will have the least distortion as I move towards the edges, but I'm staring straight ahead, I have more and more distortion. It's like a fisheye effect. And the same is true for elevation going up and down, but we're just looking in plan view. So I want that to be um, 30 degrees. So I'm gonna draw, uh, I'm gonna try to get this precise so that you kind of get a sense of what that means here. So I'm gonna draw a perpendicular, a vertical line through this stationary point and I'm gonna pick a point just somewhere out here, it doesn't matter where. And I want uh, 30 degrees, uh, I want 30 degrees um, uh, from that um, center line. So let's say 30 degrees one way and 30 degrees the other way. So this is gonna be my cone of vision, okay? So my cone of vision is 30 degrees And I want to capture the building. Uh, first of all, I have to draw it to a comfortable scale. So you want to draw your building at the bottom of your paper. And you want to uh, capture that uh, so-called cone of vision, which is about 30 degrees. It doesn't have to be precisely 30 degrees, but you could see now that if I stood here and, and tried to draw it, I wouldn't get most of the building, miss some pieces. This might be too close. Whatever. So this is about right if this is a, a, a sheet of paper here for you. The next thing is um, our um, um, perspective lines. And our perspective lines, the way we're going to do this here is the um, uh, edges of the building that are visible. So this edge will go to some vanishing point and this edge will go to some vanishing point. Uh, consequently, you want to make sure your building doesn't, look, you're not looking at your building straight on like this. We're not going to have much of a perspective or this, but something doesn't really matter. You know, something like that it doesn't really matter. Uh, but what am I looking at? I'm looking, where am I going to shoot out this way? And where am I going to shoot out this way? And I'd like my uh, perspective lines to be larger than my cone of vision. So I don't know if that makes sense or not, but let's see how Let's see if we could do that. So a parallel line to this edge through here and a parallel line through this edge through here. And now I have a pretty comfortable uh, cone of vision, which is the inner one and a, a fairly comfortable um, perspective mm, span, I guess is the best way to say it. Okay, so now we're going to establish this picture plane and the picture plane again has the reason why I'm doing all this is that if you screw this up, you might get some serious distortion here. 
so let's uh, try to get this uh, right here, uh, or as right as we can. I'm going to establish the picture plane at some point, uh, and it doesn't have to touch the building. Uh, some books say that you can touch the building, of course you can, but I'm going to make this kind of arbitrary. So I'm going to call this picture plane point. Picture plane point. P, P, P. That's my picture plane point. So uh, before you draw your picture plane point, you just recognize you could put it in front of the building, in the middle of the building, anywhere, but somewhere, somewhere here, and it's a horizontal line. Okay, I'm gonna hide, um, hide these lines here right now. Um, I'm gonna hide my cone of vision because I don't really need the cone of vision anymore. I just wanted to make sure that it's comfortable. So I'm gonna hide my cone of vision lines and now I have this perspective edge. And uh, I'm gonna say this is the left side of the picture plane and this is the right side of the picture plane. So let's find those points here. Where do these intersect? And that's going to be the left side of the picture plane. P picture plane left. And this one is going to be picture plane right. And once again, these lines are based on the slope of the sides of the building going through the standing point. Uh, and that's picture plane right. Okay, this is the picture plane. It is a plane, a two-dimensional surface, but it looks like a line, which is a one-dimensional surface, but we're above it, so it's a vertical plane, and we're just looking down on it, and it looks like a line. I'm gonna hide picture plane point right now so that we don't want it. Um, all of these construction lines should be very, very light, by the way. They're, uh, I can hide them. You can't hide them, so keep them light. They're just there to aid you. Okay, the next thing is write in your sketchbooks. You need the true height at one point. Exclamation point. You need the true height at one point. Exclamation point. Now, what on earth does that mean? Let's go back to our three-dimensional uh, uh, view of the structure here. And... Uh, I'm going to zoom out and show you where I am, and the standing point is over here. So I could choose the height of the wall at A as my true height, or the height of the wall back here, or whatever. I'm going to choose the furthest one, just kind of arbitrarily. The one above C is going to be my true height. So what do I do? I go, I draw a line from my standing point through the point that I am interested in from the standing point and I'm interested in C, so I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna find out where does it intersect the picture plane. And I'm going to call that CP for it's point C, but it's point C on the picture plane. And then I'm going to do the same with um, the other ones, uh, the key points, point D, point A, and point B. The, we'll worry about that little cut uh, shortly. Let's just do A, uh, D. Doesn't matter, we'll do all of them. So here it is, this is D prime, It's or D on the picture plane. Let's rename that, DP. And then A on the picture plane. And that will be AP. And finally B on the picture plane, and that will be BP. So what I'm doing is drawing a straight line through the standing point and seeing where does that project, oops, where does that project uh, onto the picture plane. So that is D, no B, BP. Okay, the next thing is I need a ground plane. And the ground plane is arbitrary again. It's when I'm drawing my perspective uh, beautiful watercolor or whatever I'm doing, I want the building to sit on the ground. So where is the ground plane? Now it doesn't matter where you put it, but let's have the edge of the ground plane line up with the edge of the picture plane on both sides. So draw a vertical line through these uh, picture plane right, picture plane left, and let's put a point on here somewhere it doesn't matter, and let's call that ground plane left. Ground plane left and then ground plane right on the other side. So it needs to be a horizontal line, ground plane left and ground plane right. Ground plane right. 
Now, in your notebooks, there was something with an exclamation point in your sketchbooks. And what did that say? It said that you needed the true point, the true height of some point. And we chose C. It doesn't matter which one you want to choose, but I just arbitrarily chose C. The true height, ladies and gentlemen, arises from the ground. That makes perfect sense, I think. The height of the building is from the ground to the top of the wall. So let's go from the height of the building to the top of the wall from the ground plane. So everything emanating from your picture plane will always be perpendicular. That's really easy to remember. Let me say that again. Everything emanating from your picture plane will always be perpendicular to the picture plane. So it's going to be vertical lines because our picture plane is horizontal. So let's draw a, a perpendicular line through C and that is going to be C on the ground plane. That's super important, super important, super important. Rename CP. Okay, and now I need my horizon line. So the horizon line is typically at your eye level and the ground is below your feet. So um, this is interesting and, and worth studying, but right now I'm just going to kind of put the horizon line here so that I have a kind of a comfortable size picture in here. Uh, I'll explain what I what I mean by comfortable uh, shortly here. So I'm just going to drop a line in here. Doesn't matter really where it is. We can move it. Well, I can move it. You can't move yours. Uh, but let's find that um, and this here. And this is going to be the vanishing point on the left. And this will be the vanishing point on the right. So all of the walls that are sloping like this kind of northwest are going to focus on this. So what does that mean? BA will focus on this and CD will focus on this. And they will appear to be converging, which is the magic of perspective. Things that really are parallel in real life do not appear parallel in the perspective drawing. That's what it is. That's what makes it so special. Okay, the next thing I think may be confusing to students. So, the dimensions of the elevate of uh, the height of the perspective drawing, the true height, the thing with the exclamation point in your notebook. It is arbitrary, it's whatever is comfortable for you because this building could be 300 feet if it's a Walmart or a soccer stadium. It could be 3000 feet if it's some kind of military hangar and I'm looking at it from a satellite. Or it could be 30 feet if it's a house and I'm somewhere in a tree. You, you don't know what that is. But I need 14 feet here. So if this is 3,000, you know, 14 would be infinitely small. So these scales are independent of each other. You could draw whatever you want for this vertical scale. It is the true height and it doesn't matter where you put it. So that is the true height of C. I'm just going to say that that is 14 feet. And I'd like you to pull out your red uh, pencils right now and draw a segment here, something like that, and call that true height. True height. And that is 14 feet. Okay? So, what do we have so far? We have the height of the wall at point C. One more time, just looking at it in 3D, you'll get a sense of it. I have this height here. That's my true height. Now I'm going to draw vanishing uh, point construction lines, very, very faint lines. I'm going to make them sort of light here, maybe an or like a, an orange from the top of the wall at C through the bottom of the wall at C. And then I'm going to switch colors here. Uh, something again, kind of delicate here. Oops. So let me make these blue and this one orange, sorry. close enough. Okay, so these are the orange ones and these are the light blue ones here. Now, here's the magic of perspective. Let me hide a few things here so it kind of makes sense here. Here's the magic of perspective. This is 14 feet. 
This is 14 feet. This is 14 feet. This is 14 feet. This is 14 feet. This is 14 feet. They're all 14 feet. And you and I know that the top of the wall and the bottom of the wall in real life, if the wall is 14 feet, those two lines are parallel. But this is why we're doing this. If something is closer to you, it looks bigger. If it looks, if it's further away from you, it looks smaller. But here, get this in your head. That's all 14 feet. And the same here. This is 14 feet, 14 feet, 14 feet, 14 feet. Okay? Good. I think that's good. Okay, now I want to uh, locate point D, for instance, on this back wall. Let's call that the sort of the north. Uh, let's call that the east, east wall, northeast here kind of wall, this one. That wall has to be swooping towards this left vanishing point, just like this wall here has to be swooping towards that left vanishing point. So what do we do? Well, we already know where DP is. We've already gone through the trouble of constructing that. So it's the same process as we just did for CP. DP, remember, was generated from a line going from the standing point through D. And there's DP right there, okay? And now, from the picture plane, go vertical. Always, always, always vertical. So here we go. Go vertical from DP. And now, all I have to do is find the intersections along this 14-foot um wall. A 14 foot tall wall that's kind of northeast here. So let's get those intersections here. This and this and this and this. Okay. And I'm going to hide this line here. And now I have my plane, that back plane. And that's the back plane of our building drawn in perspective. I know in real life those are parallel lines. In perspective they all converge to the um, vanishing point. Let's do this back wall here. Let's call that northwest. I'm going to draw it as if it's 14 feet. I know it's not. Uh, it's got that little cutout. But let's not worry about the cutout yet. Let's just pretend that it's a solid wall 14 feet all the way across. This is 14 feet. That's 14 feet. That's 14. They're all 14 feet. And I need to go from C to B here. So I need to find where that is on the drawing and I already know it's established by the picture plane and what do you do from the picture plane? You go perpendicular to the picture plane. Boom. Oops. That was terrible. Sorry. Perpendicular to the picture plane. And now find out these heights here. So let me hide these lines just to make sure that I don't get the wrong line. So I'm going to go to these lines now right here. So let's get these this and this and this and this. Now if that back wall was actually 14 feet tall all the way across, this is what it would look like in perspective. Okay. And furthermore, the cool thing about this is, is that depending on where I am looking at it, I'm going to have uh, a slightly different point of view and where my horizon line is, maybe my horizon is above or below the ground, uh, I have a slightly different view, okay? So let's leave it like that. Now let's construct this wall here, this wall here. Which lines are needed for that wall here? Remember, these walls swoop towards a vanishing point left. So I need to get those lines, I need those lines again, the vanishing point left line here. I'll just recreate it. And I'm looking for point A. Where is point A on this thing here? These are all 14 feet. This is 14 feet. This is 14 feet. So I need to find out where it is at A. So it's super, I hope, super obvious. I'm going to change the color just so, so you could get a little uh, more pizzazz here. So this is A. And now where does this intersect the lower part of the construction line and the upper part of the construction line? Lower and upper. Okay, so that wall is 14 feet tall all the way across. And I could just uh, make that construction here. Make that wall here. All right, so now it's starting to look pretty good, I think. You're, I'm tempted to connect the dots here. Uh, if it was a solid wall, I could connect the dots, but I want to talk a little bit about checking your work here. So um, let's think about this for a second. 
Uh, right now, I'm just pretending everything is 14 feet. So this is 14 feet and that's 14 feet and they all should swoop in uh, to the uh, to this vanishing point right. So let's just check that they do. Vanishing point right to the top here and look, it goes right to there, that's beautiful. And this one, vanishing point right to the bottom, boom, it's beautiful, right? And I did not, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't use these two lines to con construct this plane. I used these two lines to construct this plane. I used these. But I'm checking the accuracy of my work here. And um, because the, the argument is I could find A if I'm going from B, or I can find A if I'm going from D. And if you did it right, you, it should work. Uh, with, uh, you know, kind of independent of my uh, distortion that I talked about. So I think we're pretty good here so far. Um, kind of captured it so far. So let's uh, hide some of these lines now. And let's go to get those cuts because the cuts uh, uh, are um, slightly more, you know, not super complicated. It's, it, it's just the same as the other uh, entities here. So I'm going to hide uh, these. I don't need these right now. Obviously you can't hide them. All right, so uh, let's find, let's let's delete that one back there because I don't really want that. And I, uh, I want to figure out where L is at the bottom of the, let's go find L, sorry. Uh, let's go look at L. L is this point here. L is this point here under, uh, under the short part of the wall and M is under that short part of the wall. So I, I want to find out where L is in my perspective drawing. That'll be on the ground plane. So where is L on the ground plane? So the technique is exactly the same. I start with the standing point and go through L and boom, that's LP. I need that point. Call that LP. And I need MP also. So go from standing point to MP, find that point here. Call that MP. Okay, now uh, let me get that ground plane in here one more time. So the ground plane is here. So what do we do from the picture plane? We go up to the ground plane, remember? We go up to the ground plane, perpendicular line from here to there, oops. And I need to, um, I'm sorry, I didn't need the ground plane. Uh, I need to get where does that intersect that um, back wall here, those lines back here going from vanishing point right. I need to find out where those uh, cuts are. Uh, what do we say, it was L and M, remember? So I'll do the top and the bottom here. Uh, the top of the wall and the bottom of the wall. And here I'll do the top of the wall and the bottom of the wall. Okay, now I'm gonna um, make sure that uh, you see that that is on the back wall here. And in our three-dimensional drawing, it is, um, we said it's halfway up, so this cutout was half of, uh, the short was uh, seven feet, and the uh, main the height, the tall wall was 14 feet. So you could just get the halfway point right here between these two, and that will be the height of the wall on the back side. Let's call that the north side. Uh, so let me hide this line here. So you need to find this center point between these two here. You could just do that eyeballing it. It doesn't have to be super exact. And now I have absolutely everything 
I can make that back wall here. So just just to be sure, I'm gonna not show these guys here. I'm only gonna show the the, the back wall here. And uh, here we go. I'm gonna draw that wall back here and hide this line here. And now once again, no matter where I am on my perspective, uh, way above it, where's the horizon, or what I establish to be ground, or what I establish to be the viewpoint, I have a very, very solid uh, building. And then you would repeat that for uh, exactly the same on the front wall. That would be K and N. Find K, P, N, P. And where would they line up? They would go through these lines here, uh, through the bottom and then through the top there. Um, and then uh, KP, the same steps as before. Okay, I think that should help you do the uh, exercise and good luck.